Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be talking about the stages of change. There's a lot of hoopla lately that ethics is no longer tested on step one and I want to be clear that even if that's true, even if ethics are not tested on step one, communications are still heavily tested on step one. And if ethics indeed get cut out, then communications will probably make up a larger percentage of the pool of questions that formerly was called ethics, but now we'll just call communications, question mark. So what I mean by that is that even embedded within a communications question, you might need to know content that you previously need to, needed to know in the ethics section. So if they're giving you a question that has all those answer choices and various quotes that you could use, you may still need to know the principles of medical ethics in order to answer a communications question. Now, the stages of change is a topic that kind of touches all of those categories. It's a little bit of ethics. It's a little bit of communications. It's actually also a little bit of psychiatry. So it's a very high yield topic. It shows up a lot. I'm sure you're familiar with seeing practice questions like this. And a lot of people get tripped up on these questions. My philosophy is that these should be super easy. So I want to go through these one at a time, explain everything that you need to know so that when you do get a question on the stages of change, you look at it as free points and not as something where you're like, I can't believe I'm getting this wrong. What has my life come to? Why did I go into medicine? I should have been a lawyer. All right. So here are, here's a chart. You guys know I hate charts, but this is really the only way to put all this information together. So let's go through each of the stages of change one at a time. We'll define each stage and then we'll do an example, like a clinical example, and we'll go through that clinical example explaining where the patient is at every different step or every different stage. So the first stage of change is pre-contemplation. And in pre-contemplation, the person does not yet acknowledge that there is an issue or that there is a problem. After pre-contemplation, you have contemplation. And in contemplation, the patient acknowledges that there is an issue, but they are not yet ready to do anything about it. The next step is preparation. In the preparation stage, the person acknowledges that there is an issue and now they are intent to eventually act and make some changes. The next step is action. And as the name action implies, this is where the person acts. So there is a behavioral change that occurs in this stage. The next stage is maintenance. So following action after the patient acts to change their issue and to modify their behavior, now they enter a stage where effort is made to sustain the action stage. And then lastly, there's relapse. So unfortunately, some people revert to a previous stage, and this you can think of as having a setback. Now, I think we can all agree that when we list these stages out and define them, everybody is in agreement that this is pretty straightforward. But what's really, truly challenging is applying these stages to clinical examples. So where USMLE and Comlex will go is they will give you an example, describe somebody to you, and ask you which stage they're currently in. So let's do an example and we'll use this clinical example with the various stages to help paint a picture. So suppose that a 40 year old male with a history of opioid use disorder comes into your office. This patient has a four year history of intravenous heroin abuse and is still actively using heroin. Now, if we were to open up our table again and list all the stages, let's go through one at a time and I'll give you an example of each of these various stages. So for pre-contemplation, a person would be in pre-contemplation if they said, I don't have a drug problem. So if you had a 40 year old male with a clear history of opioid use disorder, and the first thing out of their mouth is, I don't have a drug problem, they're in pre-contemplation. Again, they've not yet acknowledged that they even have a problem, and that clearly puts them into pre-contemplation. If, in fact, this person was in contemplation, they might say something like, I know the heroin is killing me, but I just can't take the time to go to rehab right now. And what you can see illustrated here is that the person acknowledges that there's an issue. There's a little bit of self-doubt about that issue, but they are not yet ready to act on it. So they're still doing things like coming up with reasons why they can't enter the next stage. If this person was in the preparation stage, they might say something like, I've been thinking about going to rehab or starting buprenorphine. What do you think, doc? 
And you can see here that the person, one, acknowledges that there's an issue, so they're at least in contemplation. And then two, they're telling you that they've been thinking about doing something, which puts them squarely in the preparation phase. And the distinction here is that they haven't yet acted on anything, right? They've not uh, uh, sent out their insurance information for rehab. They've not asked to be put on buprenorphine. There's no action yet. There's no behavioral modification yet. There's just thinking about it. They're kind of outlining the steps. You might infer that they've Googled a little bit to see what treatment for opioid use disorder looks like because clearly by using the terminology rehab and buprenorphine, they've, there's a little bit of education there. So they've done some research. They've prepared. So this puts them in the preparation stage. The next stage is action. So if someone was in action, they would have acted, right? So in this example, the person might be in an inpatient rehab on the phone with you and they're like, yeah, I feel so much better. They took action. They modified behavior, all right? That's the action stage. Now in maintenance, this person might say something like, I've been on buprenorphine for a year now. So they're undertaking some step to sustain the action. So the action was changing the behavior and actually acting or modifying it. So they went to rehab. And then presumably when they got out, they went back to your office and you put them on buprenorphine and now they've been on that maintenance medication for a year. So they're actively maintaining the behavioral change. And then relapse, pretty easy. This person relapses on heroin and unfortunately uses again for the first time in 18 months. And then that kind of bumps them backwards into a previous stage. Okay, so this was an example of the various stages. But if we go back to our overview definition here of all these different stages, I just want to talk for a second about what the hardest part of this is and how to conceptualize this. So because USMLE and Complex it wants to challenge you, honestly, they're probably not going to give you a question where the person is in pre-contemplation, maintenance, or relapse. Because as you can see here, those stages are extremely distinct and there's no controversial, like you get a question on those stages, you know exactly what it is. Pre-contemplation, they don't even know they have a problem. So it's the easiest one to answer. Maintenance is like actively taking steps to sustain behavior. And that's also pretty clear on exams. Same for relapse, right? If they tell you that someone used drugs for the first time in however long, you know they're in relapse. So where the test is gonna go is they're gonna ask you to pick between these three stages. They're gonna ask you to pick between contemplation, preparation, and action. And they're gonna word the question intentionally vaguely to make you cast doubt on, on like, uh, did they do an action yet or are they still preparing? So I wanna try to give you a very simple conceptual framework from which to look at this to make this simple. So first let's talk about the difference between contemplation and preparation. The big picture between contemplation and preparation is that in the preparation stage, that's where the person starts to do their research. And I want you to think about that broadly and then apply that to different examples. So contemplation, the person has some self-doubt. It's imagine like the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other, and they're arguing back and forth. The person knows that there's a problem, but they're, they're still not squarely focused on lining up the steps to fix that problem because they have the self-doubt. They still have the devil on the other shoulder that's like, no, man, you don't have a problem. It's great. So they know that there's a little bit of a problem, but absolutely no step whatsoever was taken to do any research. So in this example that we did, it would be like researching what the treatment for opioid use disorder is. That, that, that would not have even happened. You can think about other examples as well. If the person doesn't go online and like look into what's going on surrounding their problem or talk to any friends about their problem and it's literally only a conversation within oneself where there's a little bit of self-doubt and a little bit of recognition that there's a problem, that's your cue that the person's in contemplation. The preparation phase really needs some like research or some very early preemptive planning. Okay, so that's a good transition. Now let's talk about the preparation versus action stage. A lot of people get tripped up here because they see something like, let's say in this example, the person went on online and was looking up nearby rehabs. Medical students would be like, well, that's an action, right? They're taking in action. They're doing something to modify behavior. And actually that's preparation. So in the preparation stage, the intention is there to ultimately act but these are the steps leading up to the action stage. So whatever the problem is that USMLE or Comlex gives you, try to establish in your head what action would look like. So in this case, the person had opioid use disorder 
action would be going to rehab or getting on buprenorphine and anything that has to happen that leads up into that which is a separate thing distinct from that action that would all fall into preparation so whatever action is if something needs to be done preemptively to get to that point that usually falls into preparation so in preparation even if the person is technically doing something that doesn't necessarily mean that they're in action so in preparation they're like okay i've identified that action and behavioral modification will look like, you know, going to rehab. How do I prepare to go to rehab? So go to rehab is acting. How do I prepare to go to rehab? Let me look up some rehabs in my area. That would be preparation. So again, these three things sound very similar on USMLE and Comlex, but big picture idea here is that contemplation is just the internal struggle the person has. I've got a problem. Eh, do I have a problem? You've got a problem. All right, I have a problem. Like that, that constant self-doubt and that, con that constant um, arguing within oneself, that's contemplation. They know they have a problem, but they're not yet Googling, what, you know, what do I do about it? Googling, what do I do about it? Taking steps, taking preemptive steps to figure out what is the action, that's preparation. And then the actual changing or modifying of the behavior, that's action. So try to keep these three things separate. They're very challenging. On exams, it's gonna be very stressful if you're not able to keep a big framework here. And the last thing that I'll say is if you're taking USMLE or Comlex and you're not sure which of these three to pick, just go with your gut. A lot of times people talk themselves out of the correct answer. And a lot of research has shown that when you're taking exams, your gut is usually correct. So don't look at a question and be like, this feels like preparation to me, but I'm going to choose contemplation because blah, blah, like, you know, some arbitrary reason. Just go with your gut if you have to guess. Um, that's usually always the correct answer. So hope this was useful to everybody. Best of luck. Keep up the awesome work that you guys are doing.